It's Tuesday, which means it's time for a tutorial. Time to learn something. And as you can see from this very beautiful young woman, we're talking about something that's going to send you into space. No, of course we're not. This is Visor. It's a protocol for allowing you to interact with DeFi, uh, particularly Uniswap, without actually having to interact with Uniswap. How does it work? Well, all of that coming up after this message is from our, you guessed it, sponsors. Don't let DeFi interest rate volatility hold you back. With Notional version 2, you can lock in your rates for up to a year. Notional serves borrowers and lenders alike, so you can leverage up your crypto portfolio or build a fixed rate income stream on your assets on Notional's easy to use interface. With version 2 liquidity mining, LPs earn note token incentives, liquidity fees and interest on deposits of USDC, DAI, ETH, or WBTC. Plus, LPs can even borrow against their liquidity for maximum capital efficiency. Notional.finance, stability and certainty now available in your crypto portfolio. TracerDAO is a derivatives meta protocol that allows anyone to create a financial market through Tracer's permissionless open source infrastructure. It designs and installs financial derivatives as deployable smart contracts via the Tracer factory. Financial contracts like the perpetual swap can be engineered and added to the factory for deployment, where it's voted on by TracerDAO governors before the new market is created. With TracerDAO, they envisage a world where you can effortlessly manage your local consumption risk, things like how much fuel you'll need and use, for example. One of TracerDAO's first products, Perpetual Pools, is a leveraged token that allows individuals to gain fungible, leveraged exposure to a price feed without the risk of liquidation. TracerDAO currently has liquidity mining incentives for users to enter into leveraged positions on either BTC or ETH, and there are extra incentives to provide these fungible leveraged tokens to specific balancer pools, shoring up secondary market liquidity. So Visor, what is it? Well, they're vaults. You deposit tokens, and they allow you to earn fees from LP positions on Uniswap. And of course, Uniswap is where this all starts because when Uniswap switched to version 3, they introduced this concept of concentrated liquidity because previously liquidity was spread all across the price spectrum and that meant that it was very inefficient and when you had a position on as an LP, it wasn't certain that your liquidity was actually going to be tapped into. With concentrated liquidity, you can set the boundaries, um, the price range within which your liquidity is going to be uh, fixed. That's up to you. And so you have these beautiful graphs with curves on them, and that just represents the bounds within which your liquidity is concentrated. This is uh, efficient for Uniswap because it allows the, the liquidity to be concentrated where it's most needed. It allows for single-sided provision, which is new in version 3. It means liquidity provisions are more efficient, as I said. Uh, but the price can exit the bounds defined by the position. So if you have a, a rapid or violent move in the market, um, the liquidity can, the, the pricing can move away from the bounds set by your position, which means you're no longer earning fees on that position. Um, but if you're within the bounds, then you're earning many more fees and it can be quite an effective way of earning fees on Uniswap. That of course means positions require active management. So you're constantly checking, am I in, in range or am I out of range? Am I in range or am I out of range? And of course, a mature way of attacking Uniswap v3 is to set up traps of liquidity all over the place so that when the price does move, you pick up that move and then you can close the, the other position and start setting traps wherever you, you feel they're most appropriate. But that's quite a sophisticated strategy. And I ain't got time for that. Do you? This has opened up what Hayden Adams called the great opportunity of V3, which is existing projects can build themselves. And he says, I think we're going to start to see projects that are using Uniswap V3 as a way of expressing market making strategies and getting people to adopt them. So you can imagine that if you really understand how the market is moving, you could put together some pretty effective strategies for taking advantage of LPing and market making on Uni V3. It's a whole game all to itself. And if you understand how much volume is going through Uniswap, it's a very profitable game as well. That brings us to Visor. Visor only exists because of Uniswap 3.3. It is designed to take advantage of concentrated liquidity and do it in a very unique and unusual way. And they're aiming to solve four specific problems. Liquidity discoverability, liquidity reputation, liquidity programmability, and liquidity security. And the way they do it is by introducing this concept of smart vaults. Now, they didn't 
actually come up with this, but this is the whole platform upon which Visor is built. Smart vaults for liquidity mining. So what exactly is a smart vault? Well, it's an NFT that you mint and deposit assets into. And you permission the assets that sit within that NFT to interact with um, specified hypervisors and supervisors. We'll get onto what those are in a second. But essentially, you permission once, and then they're free to do what you need them to do. But the important thing is, within that environment of the NFT vault itself, things happen gaslessly. You don't have to sign a transaction and pay gas every time you want to subscribe or unsubscribe to a hypervisor. And that's all happening within the NFT. So you can stake or lock tokens in there, you can receive your rewards as normal, and gaslessly subscribe or unsubscribe to available hypervisors. But what is a hypervisor? Well, you have your NFT smart vault. It wants to interact with a DeFi protocol, Uniswap 3, V3, for instance. There needs to be something in between that allows it to do that. And that is what the hypervisor is. It's a smart contract that interacts with your, your vault, but also interacts with external DeFi protocols. It's the intermediary for all of that. Then there's the supervisor. And the supervisor is a controller that carries out asset management for you. So it will rebalance your position and it will do all of that actively on your behalf. So the supervisor is working with the hypervisor to coordinate where your liquidity is positioned. Sound good? And all that happens without you having to do anything. If that sounds too complicated for you, you can also stake Visor. Uniswap doesn't allow you to reinvest fees. So you take your fees and it doesn't then compound them for you, but Visor does. So when Visor captures protocol revenue, it takes 10% of the fees that are reinvested, collects those up, and then use them to buy back the Visor token, distributing that Visor to anyone who's staking within the vault. So if you don't want to supply assets, you can simply buy the Visor token itself, stake it, and then earn fees based on everyone else earning fees. It's not a massive APR, but it's a pretty kind of straightforward one, and it allows you to capture um, a piece of all of the action that's going on on the Visor platform, which might be of interest to you. So how do you get started? Well, we're going to jump into Visor itself in a second. Uh, I couldn't show you this page because I've already actually minted a Visor NFT, and it wouldn't allow me to unmint or go back to a position where I didn't have a mint. But anyway, um, once you go to Visor, you can go to the provide active liquidity page. And here where it says stake Visor, um, it will actually say mint Visor NFT. So what you'll do then <clears throat> is just click on this and mint the NFT and that will be your smart vault. We can actually look at these on OpenSea, believe it or not, because they are NFTs. They don't look very nice. Nothing very exciting here. And I'm presuming that you could just buy this V3 NFT and use that as your, your vault. I'm pretty sure you could do that. But if you don't want to do that and you don't think that's safe enough, then you go to the Mint Visor NFT section here, and then that will allow you to set up your smart vault. So here we are. Once you have your NFT, you, you will have these options. So you go to the Provide Active Liquidity page, and it will give you a list of the hypervisors that are currently operating. And here you can see VVisor. This is the Visor staking. Um, facility. And here you've got a 5.89% APR. Um, we've also got MVI ETH, ETH ENS, that might be interesting. What is the APR? 877.12% on ETH ENS. So if you'd like to get some more information about what's going on here, we can go to the analytics tab and start to have a look at what's happening on Visor so let's uh, have a look at some pairs here and see if we can get some information. I might have a look at the USDC ETH pair and see what's happening here. So this gives you a kind of an idea of where the liquidity has been and how many fees have been generated. So here we've got 420,000 in fees. And let's have a look at, for instance, uh, oh, that might be a good one. 1 million in fees generated, and the total TVL on UniV3 is actually 7.45. So quite a lot of the ohm that's being provided to Uniswap is actually coming from Visor itself. Interesting. I don't think that's the same on other pairs, but that would definitely show you that that ohm Visor vault is pretty popular. So let's say we want to provide active liquidity ourselves. 
Um, we can do this if we want to do the ETNS pair, for instance. We could select that, just drill down and get a bit more information about um, what we can do here. The max WEATH deposit is two, and the max ENS deposit is 100. So you can't put a great deal in, and I think they're throttling it at the moment just to keep the, the protocol and the, the system relatively secure. So you can't do a huge amount there, but you know, for 877, maybe you don't need to. So the next thing you're gonna do is click on Vault Deposit, um, and it will give you a warning here, proceed with caution. DeFi is bleeding edge technology. While this hypervisor has been audited out of an abundance of caution, you should not deposit more than you're willing to lose. Wise words. So we'll proceed here. And then we have a, an option here. We can choose single asset liquidity or double asset liquidity. So you can deposit ETH. Actually, I think you're going to be depositing ETH. Uh, or you can deposit ENS. Let's go ahead and choose single asset liquidity. And then next, so I have 10 ENS tokens here, which I can supply. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Then I have to improve that. So we'll go ahead and improve it. $30 to approve ENS, it's not the worst. So we'll just wait for that to approve. One eternity later. So now what we need to do is go ahead and click next, then deposit and deposit your assets into your Visa Smart Vault. I'm not going to do that, here's why. $275 in gas. This, like every other kind of big DeFi game, works best at scale. So if we were putting in, you know, 100 ENS, that might be worth doing it. But for 10 ENS, it really isn't because that's about, the gas alone is about half the value of what I'm putting in. So I'm already down 50% before I've even started. That makes no sense. And the reason we're looking at this is because this is early days for this protocol. And these kind of strategies are actually incredibly powerful over long periods of time and at scale. And there's an enterprise version of this, which I think is going to be really interesting. But it's also very interesting from the protocol side. If you are looking to um, do active management strategies for your own liquidity as a DeFi protocol itself, this gets really interesting. And some of the composability elements of this, being able to redirect yield somewhere else, time locking yield, these things are really fascinating. But at the moment, the cost is prohibitively expensive. So I look at this as a thought exercise. I look at this as a from a distance only. However, I do feel that maybe staking Visa could be the best way to take advantage of this at the moment. But there's no doubt that if you have 850% APR, you can probably eat the gas fees if you can put enough into it. So I'm going to reject that. Um, but like any other protocol, you'll be able to manage your positions from the dashboard here and get a, an overview of how you're doing. The payouts for single-sided providers, there's just a, a note there. You can provide a single asset, but when you withdraw, you'll actually get paid in the pair. So you'll get paid in this instance, ETH and ENS. So it doesn't allow you to withdraw as single assets, only deposit them. But, you know, I'm sure that'll be fine. So that is a tutorial all about how to use the Visor Smart Vaults. Again, I know what the comments will say, ETH is too expensive. Yes, it is. But Visor and everything that Visor is doing should be replicable elsewhere in the future say Avalanche or Akala, we will start to see more and more smart vaults like this turn up. I just think it's a very interesting and smart way to allow people to manage their liquidity. And active management of liquidity on Uniswap V3 is just such a powerful strategy. So if you have a suggestion for us to cover in a tutorial, please do drop it in the comments below. Give us a like, subscribe, Hit that bell if you want to know exactly when we drop a new video. We do them all the time, so you can just check in daily. We have something very exciting coming this week. We talked to one of the greatest rappers known to man, I'm serious, about his NFT drop. That is coming tomorrow, so don't miss that. It's going to be an exciting week. Anyway, that was the tutorial for today. Have a good one.